Hey everybody, it's Fang here with this week's uh, Design Cinema. So this video is going to be pretty straightforward. It is just a uh, painting demo of a vehicle. So I'd like to spend this part of this episode talk a little bit about what's going on behind the scenes as far as uh, the brushes, the setup itself, the machine being used. I think that side is also quite interesting. Um, so uh, also uh, try to watch this in HD because the original uh, video was actually recorded on a very high-end machine. Uh, we recorded this at uh, a lot higher res than even uh, Blu-ray, which is about 2560 by 1600 resolution. So it's very high res. So if you're watching the HD, you should be able to see all the menus and uh, everything uh, quite clear. Um, I started this painting by having a pretty abstract scene, as you can see here, with just some brushes and marking out some values basically on the page. Uh, if you watch the previous video, especially the one with the robot walker, you'll see that it has a very similar approach. Um, I started this last night actually at home. I did this uh, versus I usually record these kind of things at, at the uh, at the office. But I started at home and just have Camtasia running and just decided to start painting something um, without too much planning ahead, uh, which is like something I like to do, especially for demos. That way. It, the creative uh, process is more spontaneous versus uh, completely planned out. Um, and also for you guys, you get to see something uh, happen uh, live, basically. Um, the video sped up about uh, maybe three times, maybe faster. I finished the entire thing in about two hours tops, I think maybe even an hour and a half. So you're watching it a little bit more sped up. Um, so about the painting itself, uh, right now I'm just concentrating on the background, using various brushes to kind of uh, uh, scratch the surface, uh, I guess in a way, give it some teeth. So we have enough value on the page to start pa extracting forms from. So, because the painting is all about values, it's about light. It's about how you play with those values to start creating things that human eyes can see. Okay. Um, as far as the technical side goes, this painting is done in uh, Photoshop CS5, which is a much newer version than the one I use here in the office. Um, it's also a 64-bit version of it, so it's very, very stable and uses all the RAM uh, the machine has, which on this particular machine is a uh, uh, has 12 gigs of, of RAM, which is very helpful for digital painting. Uh, the machine itself is an Intel uh, iCore 960 with uh, a very fast hard drives installed. I actually have about six hard drives, uh, those uh, Velociraptors that spin very fast and uh, every single one of them is rated together. So therefore the write and save speed uh, is very, very fast. I'm saving a one gig file takes less than a few seconds to, to do so. So when you work with big files like these paintings you see here, it's very beneficial to have such a setup. So when you press the control S to save, you don't have to wait for Photoshop to uh, you know put everything together like five minutes, especially for a big file, uh, these things are all instantaneous, so there's no delay whatsoever. Um, this is the first time I actually recorded uh, Camtasia on this computer. I never tried it, but it was very very smooth. I was surprised that uh, recording at this resolution, uh, which is insanely high, uh, had no delay on the machine at all. It's probably because Camtasia records into RAM, and uh, with 12 gigs available, it didn't need to uh, touch the hard drive at all. So therefore, there's no uh, hard drive thrashing, as you call it, uh, at all. So I knocked out the background, and right now I'm knocking out the silhouette uh, of a vehicle. I want to do a sort of an insectoid type of thing. Uh, just kind of the theme I've been doing this whole week uh, uh, at the school, just painting just mechs for, uh, just for fun. So I thought I'd continue that last night. So this has been, I was doing this about uh, about 1 in the morning, you know. Just got decided to just try it out, record something on the computer and see what it looks like. Um, so the thinking process might not be super clear as I started this, it's just kind of just painting randomly in a way. Yeah. But with a general direction in mind. So all those things we talk about, for example, values, lighting, composition, they're all uh, within this painting. And also since this is my home machine, you're seeing some custom brushes that I don't have here at the office. Uh, a lot of these brushes are quite slow. You need a very fast machine to even use them because they're doing something like, for example, dual brush uh, or brush with textures inside them. They're quite slow, especially high res. If you have a brush, for example, that's 500 or 1000 pixels um, uh, big in, in resolution, if they're, you start turn on the special effects, they'll be very, very slow. So you do need a fast machine. But those brushes do make certain things a little faster. You can see here, it, get a, it gets a uh, kind of painterly effect. Right now I'm using the silhouette to adjust and doing some very basic values. This is all the most important step of a painting, which is the setup itself. Get all your major shapes and major forms down, get all your major values. The color tone, everything, it doesn't really matter as much because we could change that on the fly. Photoshop is very good uh, at that, and that's the advantage of working in digital, is that uh, once your values are set, the color and everything could be tweaked very, very easily in Photoshop. Right. 
and that's what I'm doing right now is getting some, you know, getting kind of like a misty uh, battle scene, sort of a foggy day with this machine, this bug machine, as you will soon see. Adding texture. So if you blur your eyes, um, even, even if you watch this video, well, blur your eyes, you can see that uh, it's starting to read quite well. And that's what I'm trying to go for in the beginning here is to make sure that the major forms, like this, the, the tubular uh, form of his body, is being defined. I'm putting in some antennas. So again, try to watch this in HD and put it to full screen. Uh, at that res, you should be able to see uh, much clearer details, such as the, the brush marks themselves, as well as the menus and uh, those sort of things. Uh, when I paint some, something like this, I generally don't use too many layers at all. I only keep the layers uh, when I'm teaching so that way students can sort of see it. But in general, right now I'm actually painting, I think just on one layer. Uh, I don't try to use undo as much. Uh, try to, you know, if you make a major uh, mistake, I tend to undo, or for example, there I, you see me do some perspective lines. Those lines I don't want in my painting, so I undo them after I do a mark. Uh, but in general, if there's a mistake or something like that, I try to do my best to paint it out versus uh, use undo to get rid of it. Now this way you kind of maintain the, the uh, I guess, analog feel of the painting, more human made versus a very digital perfection kind of painting that tends to look kind of dead uh, if you do too much of perfection in the painting itself. Like every line is perfect and everything, right? You want some, some looseness, some creativity left inside the painting. So it gives it a human feel. And, uh, and I believe humans like to look at stuff that has a little bit of human touch to it, uh, right? I think, you, for example, in the CG industry, we went through that period where everything looked super CG and because it was just cool, but it didn't actually look that good. Um, and then nowadays we're getting back to using CG to do stuff that you can't even recognize as CG. Right? It's going through the same uh, kind of same arc. So Photoshop in the beginning stages had that as well, where everything looked very Photoshop. And now you're seeing a huge trend in which most designs or most paintings are looking more like traditional uh, paintings again. Right. And this tutorial is sort of uh, uh, doing something similar. So uh, most of the brushes I use here are custom. The one brush I'm painting with is actually default. It's the chalk brush that you'll find in the brush that comes with Photoshop. Not the default one, but there's a set called, I think, traditional mediums or dry brush. It's one of those. Uh, it's a chalk brush, that's it. So uh, that's what I do most of my paintings with. So here I'm adjusting the colors. You can see that's why, because of once the value is set, you can adjust the colors. I cooled it down, turn it into a more um, uh, kind of a cyan, greenish blue sort of color palette to give that mood, that foggy early morning fog feel. This scene also doesn't have too much of a strong light source. It kind of has a random uh, alien planet sort of lighting just to keep it a little bit easier, more fun. Uh, because I am doing this at home, just kind of having fun with this painting. I'm really not doing this to uh, uh, for clients or anything like that. So uh, when I do those paintings, you tend to just do whatever you want. You know, have fun with it. So the lighting in this case, maybe there's two suns or three, who, who knows, you know, or some kind of moon. Because right now you see two hot spots in the background. So it is being backlit. However, it does have a light coming from the upper right, uh, hitting the back section of this robot. Uh, so essentially there's a bunch of different light sources. But in a way, you still want to show off this painting or show off the design. So it doesn't have to be 100% uh, based on the one light source, which is the sun in an environment like this. Those light spots in the back could be anything. It could be explosions. It could be uh, you know, artificial light from smoke or something, you know, bomb going off. So you can make a, as long as it looks cool, um, do whatever you want, especially if it's your own painting that you don't have to uh, design to spec. Here I'm adding some grass just with some, you see that little brush I have there is actually something I found on the internet. It's, uh, it's a bunch of crystals that somebody made, which by default is quite, quite unnecessary uh, in, in what I do, right? It just makes these little crystals. Um, but I altered the brush quite a bit, uh, customized it so it just turns into noise. So when I paint with it, it makes these kind of weird um, geometry patterns, which I like a lot because then you can use that to uh, as a starting point for the paint. I mentioned the word teeth a lot. It's just the same thing as when you look at a traditional canvas. It's got these little textures in it. That teeth is really good for painting because your your paintbrush tends to cling to those. And certain patterns, it could extract out. Um, something if you do a lot of traditional painting, you could feel it. You could feel the canvas. If there's a crest or something like that from the, the canvas, you can actually use that in your painting. The flow continues. So when I use these brushes, it's kind of doing the same kind of thing. It's just roughing up the canvas so it doesn't feel like the slippery white paper, you know. Instead it feels like you're painting on a real canvas. Uh, 